and welcome to Grace Lutheran Church and Holy Cross Lutheran Church Sermon Podcasts. On this podcast channel, you will hear the latest sermons taken from our weekly worship service. Our hope is that you will find joy and comfort in knowing the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man who made me a judge or arbitrator over you. And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We all want to live a good life. I mean, we want to have the best life now that we can possibly have. And there is plenty of peer pressure and advertisements to make us feel this way. Financial security, good health, no worries about our future, a nice place to live, happy family life, good friends and neighbors. Who doesn't want all of that? Your best life is now. A steak on the grill, a margarita in your hand, relaxing on the patio in the shade. Take life easy. Eat, drink, be merry. There's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, after all, our reading in Ecclesiastes today says as much that this is about as good as it gets. Ecclesiastes says there is nothing better for a person than he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. In fact, not only Ecclesiastes, but all our readings today deal with the idea in one way or another. What is the good life for you? Can you have your best life now? Is there wisdom to guide you as you live your lives in this world, your lives under the sun, as Ecclesiastes puts it? King Solomon is the likely writer of the book of Ecclesiastes, probably later in his life. He's seen it all. He's done it all. He's had it all. All the wealth, all the prosperity, a harem, whining and dining in luxury, good times, you can imagine. And now he's reflecting back on all that. He sounds a little jaded, a little cynical, to say the least. Vanities of vanities, says the preacher, Solomon. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Meaning everything is empty and has no meaning. He's been busy with many things during his career. He's accomplished a lot, but in the end, he says it doesn't amount to a hill of beans. I've seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. Okay, an ad moment here. This passage reminds me of a line from a movie my son and I used to watch called Team America by the producers of uh, South Riders of South Park. At one point in the movie, a person exclaims, now I've seen everything. To which the other person questions, did you ever see a man eat his own head? No, well, then you haven't seen everything. But King Solomon has seen everything, maybe even that. He's done everything and he confesses. There is nothing new under the sun that I have seen. Look at the world around you. 
Do you really, do you really see anything new in this generation that you have not seen before? New fads, deceptive advertisements, people striving for power, money, fame, everything changes, but to be more precise, everything changes hands. Otherwise, rise to the fore in society to take the lead in an ongoing battle for self-superiority, power, and wealth. The good life. The cosmetics have changed a bit, but underneath the mascara, we all have the same face. Nothing new under the sun. Everything changes. Everything changes hands. While you try in vain to keep your wealth, your health through stealth, everything slips away. In 1975, Paul Simon sang a song on his album, Still Crazy After All These Years. The song was titled, Slip Sliding Away. Funny thing about the song is that it was written in 1975, end of the Vietnam War, the beginning of a great recession and gas shortages, skyrocketing inflation. Everything was slip sliding away. Not necessarily a repeat of 1929, but again, there is nothing new under the sun. We are again experiencing the same things. All is vanity. The lyrics are prophetic, perhaps a modern Ecclesiastes moment. The chorus, slip sliding away, slip sliding away. You know the nearer your destination, the more you slip sliding away. Remember that song? What's your destination? What is every person's destination? Where does every human being end up in the end? Yes, death. And all is vanity. All is passing. The pharaohs tried to take their wealth and their glory with them in their tombs, being entombed in pyramids with all their stuff, even their slaves, but to no avail. Death will intervene. Death will put an end to all your stealth for wealth, health and power, your hoarding, your trinkets, your keepsakes, your roths, your properties. No amount of makeup will cover up that old face. No amount of Rogaine or Cialis will lengthen your longevity nor preserve your posterity. You can't take it with you as the saying goes. Solomon says, so I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun. And Ecclesiastes laments, what has a man for all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night, his heart does not rest. This is also vanity. It's a good question. And it's one the rich fool in Luke's parable did not consider. He was having his best life now, and where he did that, where did that get him? This rich man was doing very well by the world's standards. His only concern was that he needed more room to store all his stuff. Bigger storage. Oh, wait, we got those around here, don't we? Bigger barns, that's what I'll do. And I say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. I'm chilling like there's no tomorrow. Well, the guy was right for him. There is no tomorrow. Fool, this night your soul is required of you. In other words, tonight you will be departing this life and you will have to give an accounting for your soul. Death has come a-calling, God has come a-calling, and now where will you be? Because as you've heard before, all is vanity. Nothing lasts. He was slip-sliding away. He was nearing his destination. Are you slip-sliding away? The answer is yes. We're all slip-sliding away. 
Is everything vanity in your life? He answers, yes. Everything is not permanent. It's ever-changing. And there is nothing to which you can hold on for stability, permanence, and eternity. The last verse to Paul Simon's song is very prophetic. God only knows. God makes his plan. The information's unavailable to the mortal man. We work our jobs. We collect our pay. Believe we're gliding down the highway when in fact we're slip sliding away. This last verse is crucial for two reasons. First, it points to the reality of all humanity. There's only one destination, slip sliding away. For many, if you look good, feel good, have money, have the latest things, be the envy of others, haters gonna hate, 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 am I right? Most people believe everything and anything you do will get you through the tough parts of life, the ebb and flow of good and bad. You'll get through, but you won't. You can believe you're gliding down the highway when in fact you're slip sliding away. Because if you live life without God, you can only trust and confide in one thing, and that's yourself. What you yourself can do and the storehouses that you make in your own life. If you live life without knowing God, you do not and cannot understand that what you do or have is vanity. Because what you do or what you have is where your hope lies. Scrambling, planning, living for the now is life. But this last verse is crucial for a second reason. The word crucial comes from the word cross. The cross is the crucial reason unknown and unsung in Paul Simon's song. He is the hope for all who are slip sliding away. Contrary to the lyrics, God does know he alone knows that humanity has rejected him, has lost sight of him, and no longer cares for him. The don't know that he cares for them and wants them to return to him. Because of this, as the lyrics say, God makes his plan. But contrary to the lyrics, the information is available to and precisely intended for the mortal man and woman, for you and for me. In fact, this information is intended to be read, preached, taught, sung, and confessed to the mortal man and woman. God's plan offers life in endless abundance, abundance that only increases and is eternal, and it's stored up for you. He offers hope that defletes inflation. He brings peace that appeases as the world's souls are at war. His death and his resurrection is not vanity. He did not die and rise in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, Paul writes to the Corinthians, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vanity, and your faith is vanity. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by man came death, by a man also has come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ have all been made alive. Christ's death and resurrection is not vanity. Christ is the quintessential and crucial information to the quest of all people who seek to only preserve their lives through their storehouses, to look only to themselves. He offers all humanity what they seek 
what I seek and what you seek. God's plan washes off the cheap, vain mascara, the deception, the false hopes and persuasions offered by this world to reveal that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that nobody comes to the Father but by him. He gives you resurrection hope to understand that your life, your health, your wealth, and vanishing years are vanquished in the only victorious vanguard against death, his son. So Paul writes in Colossians, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden in a storehouse with Christ. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory, in his riches. All your life has been joined to Christ in baptism. You have been raised with Christ, even as he has been raised from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. You have a new life now, and your best life is still to come. On that day, when Christ opens all the tombs, all the storehouses, and grants life. This changes your perspective on things as it did for King Solomon. What he had as king of his kingdom did not compare to what he held on to through the promise of the Messiah. The joy for life frees you up. You have a joy that cannot be taken from you. You know where our true life is found, and it ain't in stuff, and it ain't slip sliding away. Nothing slip slides away for believers in Christ. Ecclesiastes says there's nothing better for a person than he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also I saw is from the hand of God, for apart from him, who can eat or have enjoyment? It's the apart from God living of life that is the problem. With God, through faith in Christ, now we can receive and enjoy the blessings of this life as coming from the hand of God. We can eat and drink and be merry with thankful hearts. Yes, by all means, including and especially when Christ invites you, come, eat and drink my body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Eat, drink, and be merry. Rejoice in the life Christ gives you here, free of charge. For Christ is the good life. Christ is your best life, both now and forever. Amen. To know more about the ministry of Holy Cross Lutheran Church, visit www.holycrossconcord.org forward slash home. You can find all the sermons on your favorite podcast channel at gracealoneonline.org forward slash sermons. May God bless your day.